Hi everyone! This video is designed to talk about some of the organic reaction types that you just gotta memorize. There are seven of them and we'll talk about a few of them in this particular video. We're going to start with the reaction type of substitution. And just like if I'm ever out of class, a substitute teacher comes in and takes my place, that's the key idea here for the substitution reaction itself. What you see in this example reaction is that the hydrogen of a molecule of ethane, one of them, gets substituted with an atom of chlorine. And that atom of chlorine came from one of the reactants, and you can see in the products that that hydrogen and chlorine have just swapped places. So the key idea of a substitution reaction is that we start with two products. Ooh, wow, so we start with two reactants. And we end with two products, and we substitute one atom with another. So in this case, we're substituting hydrogen with chlorine. However, we still end up with two organic molecules and something else. So it's going to be very important to remember this two reactants to two products idea because only one atom is being swapped out for another. This stands in contrast to the second type of organic reaction, which is addition. And here what you see is that we're taking two reactants and we're changing it into one product. And let's take a look at what's actually going on here. When we have our initial molecule, in this case one butene, we have a double bond between the carbons. And that's taking up two of their possible four bonding sites. So when this chlorine atom comes along, its objective is to try and bond to each of those carbons. But in order to do that, carbon and carbon can no longer have a multiple bond. It's got to break the multiple bond so that chlorine has a place to fit. So in this case, when we add something on, we're going from a scenario with multiple bonds to single bonds. So you could add chlorine and end up with this halo carbon. You could add H2 and, and go from an alkene to an alkane. You could add bromine and end up with a different type of halo carbon. But the idea is you're adding on some diatomic molecule that's going to tone down a multiple bond into a single bond. So that contrasts with substitution because we aren't swapping one atom out for another we're actually changing the reactants themselves and kind of mushing them together into one different product. The third reaction type that we're going to talk about is polymerization. Polymerization is somewhat similar to addition, but just on a much, much larger scale. So you may see um, polymerization represented using these brackets with the letter N. And what that means is we've taken our initial molecule and stuck it together so many times that we don't even really feel like counting how many times that we put it together. And can be upwards of like 200, 1,000, really, really huge numbers. If you want to see that represented in another way, really what we're doing is taking all these ethene molecules and sticking them together to form this much, much, much longer molecule. And we have some terminology for that. These individual units we call monomers. And when we stick lots and lots of monomers together, we get a polymer. You can see there's some word stuff in there, in that mer is in both of those words. Mer just means unit. And in that case, we're left with mono versus poly. Well, mono means one. So your monomer is your one unit. And when you link lots of monomers together, you get a polymer, where poly means many. 
So a pol to polymerize something means to take a simple unit and link it together over and over and over again until you get this really big, big, long molecule. And this is important because if you have anything at all made of plastic, this is how we make plastics. We stick simple molecules together to create these big, long chains. And we can link those chains together in lots of different ways. So we can get materials as different as like plastic wrap to like Nalgene water bottles. It's the same process, just done on a different scale. So in this example, what we're actually doing is taking ethene, which prior to IUPAC sort of standardizing how we named organic molecules was called ethylene. And we link it together to get polyethylene, which again was the original name for ethene. So we go from a simple unit to many units linked together. So that's the idea of polymerization. The last uh, reaction type that we'll talk about in this video is esterification. And you can see right in the name that this is going to be creating esters. Just like polymerization created polymers, this process is going to create esters. And one very quick way to get to an ester functional group, which we see right here, is to stick together an organic acid and an alcohol. And the way that that works, when these two molecules are put together with enough heat, we actually see the organic acid lose its H and the alcohol lose its OH to create water. By smushing these two things together, we now are only left with the CO then carbon link of our ester functional group. So when we stick these two things together, you can count up carbons from your acid, one, two, and from your alcohol, one, two, three, and you should see those two and three carbons reflected in your final ester. So if you're looking at trying to predict products, what you're gonna do is look for conservation of mass with carbons All carbons show in product your ester, and you will always, always, always produce H2O. So if you know to conserve mass, and you know that water will always be a product of esterification, then you're going to be able to not only predict what your final ester will look like, but if you know what your final ester looks like, you know which alcohol and acid was used to generate it. Everything to the left of this double bonded oxygen comes from your acid, whereas everything to the right of your oxygen must have come from your alcohol. So in the next video, we'll take a look at the other reaction types, but hopefully this helps break down those first four.